everyone. I'm Sarah, Verge Textures Crochet, and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Windermere Scarf. This is the first scarf in the Wonderful Hats Crochet Along for 2023. Here on my channel you will find a pattern for a matching hat if you uh, desire. And you can check out the Wonderful Hats Crochet Along Pattern Playlist and you'll find all of the patterns there and from previous years as well. This is week one of week five. So welcome if you're joining me for that. The Windermere scarf today is a very textured scarf. It's uh, about 65 inches long by five and a half inches laid flat. That doesn't include the little fringe that I've added down here at the end, which is optional. For the pattern today, I'm using a worsted weight 100% acrylic yarn. I'm using the Impeccable by Loops and Threads. There's about, let me see here, 285 yards per ball of yarn. You're going to need two of these balls at least, and possibly two and a half, depending on the length of your scarf and the fringe. Um, so uh, two to two and a half, each ball has 185 yards and it's a worsted weight. You're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook or an H8. And uh, as well, a copy of the free written crochet pattern, which is on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. There's also lots of other photos there as well and uh, information about the crochet along itself. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to take a look around. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time a new crochet pattern is uploaded. And uh, I look forward to having you crochet along with me today. So let's grab our hooks and yarn and get started. Now our Windermere scarf today is worked in rows and we're going to be working uh, the shorter end of it so we're not working it lengthwise but we'll work it across and uh, we're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain. Your foundation chain uh, can be really any multiple of stitches for this pattern or a multiple of two if you'd like to do it as I have today I'll be chaining 30 chains. and 30. Once you have your foundation chain worked, you're going to begin row one by working a single crochet into the second chain from your hook, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way across. You're going to have a total of 29 single crochet stitches. Your chain one at the start does not count as a stitch. At the end of row one, you're going to chain one and turn your work. For row two, we're going to be working in the back loops only of our stitches. To find the back loop only, you're going to take a look at the top of your stitch and you have this front loop that is closest to you and this back loop that is furthest away. Your back loop is the one we're going to be working under. So you're going to insert your hook under that stitch only and work a single crochet. From working in the back loop only all the way across, you're going to single crochet into each stitch. Again, you'll have a total of 29 single crochet stitches all worked in that back loop. At the end of row two, you're going to chain one and turn your work. We are now going to work in the front loop only of each stitch all the way across. So you're going to be inserting your hook under that loop that is closest to us and you're going to work a single crochet and then work a single crochet in the front loop of each stitch all the way across. Now 
At the end of row three, chain one and turn your work. Now for rows four and five, we're going to repeat rows two and three. So for row four, working in the back loop only, single crochet into each stitch all the way across, chain one, turn your work. And then for row five, you're going to work in the front loop all the way across. So go ahead and work rows four and five, which is a repeat of rows two and three. At the end of row five, you're going to chain three, which is going to count as a double crochet stitch and turn your work. For row six, we're going to work in the back loop only all the way across. You're not going to work in this first stitch because your chain three counts as a stitch. So beginning in your next stitch, working in the back loop only, you're going to double crochet into each stitch all the way across. At the end of row six, you'll have worked your double crochet stitches all the way across. You're going to chain one and turn your work. For row seven, we're going to begin by working a half double crochet into the first stitch. Your chain one does not count as a stitch. You're then going to work a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. To work a front post double crochet, you're going to yarn over Insert your hook from the front through to the back and around the post of the next stitch, out through the front again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two more. That's your front post double crochet. You're then going to work a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook from the back through to the front and around the post of the next stitch, out through the back again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two more. That's your back post double crochet. You're going to repeat that all the way across. Front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch all the way across until you have one stitch remaining. When you come to your final stitch, which is your starting chain three, you're going to work a half double crochet into the top of the starting chain three. Chain one and turn your work. For row eight, we're going to work in a similar way to row seven. You're going to start by working a half double crochet into that first stitch. You're then going to work a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Next, work a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across. Back post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a front post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch. All the way across until you have one stitch remaining. When you come to the end of row eight, you'll have one stitch remaining. You're going to finish off with a half double crochet into that final stitch. Chain one and turn your work. Now for rows nine through to 13, you're going to repeat your row seven and eight and then end on a row seven. So half double crochet into that first stitch for your row seven repeat, 
and then start with a front post double crochet followed by your back post double crochet. Your repeat of row 8 begins with the back post double crochet followed by the front post double crochet. So go ahead and work rows 9 through to 13, 5 more rows, and then meet me back here. At the end of row 13, this is what your piece is going to look like from the beginning. Now for the rest of the pattern, and at this time you may want to head over to richtexturescrochet.com, uh, grab that free written pattern, or grab a piece of uh, paper and a pen, or whatever <laughs> you're using. Uh, just to write down, we're going to work a series of repeats that I'm not going to work in the video itself, but uh, once you have completed row 13, you're going to repeat rows 2 through to 13, 13 more times. So your row 2 began by working a single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch all the way across. So that's where your row 2 began and then you worked the front loop row and then a back loop row and so forth. So you're going to repeat your rows 2 through to 13, 13 more times. You're then going to work rows 2 to 5 once more and then finish off on a row 2 repeat. Once you finish that you can fasten off, weave in your ends and if desired you can add a fringe just as I did to the end of my scarf. It was very simple. I just took the yarn, folded it over, and then tied a knot at the end of each. And that's all there is to working the Windermere scarf. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, once again, don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.